weight management has been kind of something I have specialized in and have done a lot of research on and have delved into very deeply for a number of years. I've been doing this for probably about eight to ten years. Diet in general is one of my passions. I, I something I really enjoy, and I really enjoy imparting to my knowledge and helping people to get results. Because bottom line, in fact, you know, our the, the business that we have, it, the, our business is called Healthy Core Results because we we believe that it's, what it comes down to is results. It doesn't matter. In fact, there's a there's a study that we that I that I cite in one of our, our programs in which they. They looked at a variety of different diets and they evaluated each one and they found that the biggest predictor of success was adherence, which is kind of intuitive, right? If you actually follow a diet, it's going to be beneficial. Now, but what I was asked to talk a little bit about was kind of the science behind why the zone diet or the paleo diet or some of these lower carb diets or higher protein diets work and, and, and why they're beneficial and why some people seem to have some significant results from them. And to kind of start into that, I want to um, I want to start out with talking about a little bit of research that was just conducted recently. It's uh, or completed recently, and I, I attended a webinar uh, not long ago, which is in which they were they were uh, talking about this research. What they looked at was protein content within the meal, and that's all they really controlled for was the amount of protein that was that they were consuming. They didn't necessarily control for calories or anything like that. It was just the protein content. And they had every one of the participants that were in the control group, they were consuming about 30 grams of protein per meal. And then they had, there was what they call the normal protein, which is what the typical American consumes, which is about 11 grams of protein for breakfast, about 17 grams of protein for lunch, and then at dinner time is about 65 grams. So we, we like protein at dinner time, but there's not so much in the other meals. And but they, so they compared the two, and they, what they looked at was perceived satiation or perceived feeling of, of fullness through the day. And so they had them do questionnaires to, to evaluate that. They also looked at some biochemical data. And what they looked at, there's, there's a couple of hormones that they specifically were, were identifying. One is PYY, which is a satiation hormone. The higher PYY levels are, the more satisfied a person feels. The other one was ghrelin, which ghrelin is an, app is an appetite hormone that the higher ghrelin levels get, the hungrier you become. In fact, if any of you guys have gone for a period of time, you know, without eating, like gone all day without eating, and then what happens at night? Yeah, what happens? You're, you have this insatiable appetite where you really can't, it's almost like no matter how much you eat, you don't really feel satisfied. Well, that ghrelin is a big player in that. He, it's what it's kind of a survival hormone that its purpose was was historically when we were start when we went without eating, it was wasn't because we were too busy. It was because food wasn't available, and it was that to drive you and compel you to find food. In fact, there's a lot of things with a lot of hormones and systems within the body that are designed to get you to eat food because historically. Man didn't look in the mirror and go, oh my gosh, I got a little bit of a belly there. Historically, it was, oh my gosh, I got to get something to eat or I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things in the body that compel us to eat. Now, they, so they looked at ghrelin levels, and then they also, what was one of the fascinating things about this study was they also looked at, at brain activity when, when seeing or, uh, images of decadent foods, high sugar, high fat mm -hmm. foods. And what they found, what was fascinating was they found was that the higher, higher protein group, which is what they, they refer to the higher protein, which was a 30 grams of protein per meal, this group actually had much lower levels of ghrelin, which basically backed up the reported feelings of satiation. That they, in fact, their questionnaires, they all reported having greater satiation through the day or feeling satisfied. And then their PYY levels were, were much higher which the biochemical data matched up with the, the perceived, re, what was re, reported as, as uh, satiation. But the, the really fascinating thing to me was when they looked, when they saw these images of decadent foods <clears throat> in certain parts of the brain where cravings are, lie, very active in the, in the normal protein group, very active responses. And then in the, in the prefrontal cortex, which is trying to make sense of what these cravings are all about and decide what to do about them, very active as well. In the higher protein group, 
nothing. No increased activity whatsoever. <laughs> so what it comes down to is that that they're, they're finding more and more that protein really plays a significant role in satiation. It plays a major role in that, which is one of the, like the paleo diet and the zone diet. One of the big things it talks about is increasing the protein so that you have increased sense of satiation, increased satiation response. Now, also, in addition to that, other parts of the science behind it as well, is uh, most of these, they have a lower carbohydrate intake as well. They recommend decrease the carbohydrate below what typically is recommended. And that is because when we, when you, when we eat something, what happens is our body responds by, as a, as a, like for example, say, you know, this you know, rice, you could eat some rice. Rice has a very high glycemic effect, meaning that when we consume that, it is made up of primarily glucose molecules. And so as that's broken down and it's absorbed into the system, blood sugars will begin to increase. As those blood sugars begin to increase, then our body, our body likes to keep blood sugars within a homeostatic level. It likes to keep it between seven, about 70, 65, 70, and 100. And when blood sugars go up, it produces insulin. Now, the greater the increase in blood sugar, the greater the production of insulin to try to bring that down. Now, insulin has a variety of functions, one of which is to, it's, it's, as, as it binds with receptors on, 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 this, on cells, um, particularly muscle and fat cells, it says, okay, open up and let the glucose come in. And so it, it's based, it sends the, the channels out, allows the glucose to go into the cell. And that's important. That's a vital function because otherwise, if your blood sugars get too high, then you, you're often probably familiar with diabetes. That's when this isn't working very well. Well, the problem comes in when you have an excess production of insulin. One of the things that insulin will do as it, when it's being produced is it will inhibit any kind of fat breakdown. And it will promote fat storage. And so the higher, the, the more you have these highs in blood sugar levels, and it's going to promote some of this, more of this fat storage. And it's going to also inhibit any kind of fat breakdown. So the idea behind of many, the, like behind the science behind some of these, like the zone and, and paleo, is that by bringing, by consuming less carbohydrates, you don't have nearly as high of a spike or a, a rise in your blood sugars. And so there's a less, less production of insulin. And as, I'm not saying that insulin is bad. Some people, there are some out there who say that insulin is this bad hormone. It's, it's not bad. It's like I, my mantra is there's no such thing as good or bad foods. There's just better choices. And, and the more we align ourselves with the better choices, the better results we're going to get. So it's not that insulin is bad. It's just it's got a, a purpose. It's got a, a major function in keeping blood sugars under control. And so that's one area. Now, one other thing, the reason why also there's the need to balance our, carbo our carbohydrate with our protein and fat is because by balancing those, what you're doing is there's the competition for absorption in which as, as, they're, as they're being digested and broken down and absorbed, it will, by eating them together, you slow down the absorption and so you don't have the rise in the blood sugars that you would have otherwise. And so it gives more a moderate increase and then a moderate, and then it comes down slow as well. Yes? Um, so sometimes it's hard, like, to make a big meal, you know, um, like for a snack. So if you just have protein, is that bad? Like, if you don't pair it with carb and, and fat, is it better? To, if you can only, like, grab one thing, like, like is it like grab a chunk of roast? Or like, do I grab a rice cake? You know, do you it's what I'm trying to the, say? the better. Do it's I'm in a hurry and I just need something quick, fast. Quick snack. I understand something very quick and something very easy. Yeah. Definitely, I the the protein it. the protein is going to be the better choice. Yeah. But it, co combining the three is going to be ideal. The reason I say it's going to be a better choice is if you grab the rice cake, what happens it's is a blood a sugar. Cookie, let's be honest. They, they, <laughs> okay, they're cooking. It's a few Oreos. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what's going to happen is blood sugars will come up, go up very quickly. You consume, what, then, then what happens? Then you know, you've consumed this, your body releases all of this uh, insulin to try to bring it back down. Within just a couple of hours, one to two hours, you're crashing. And then what happens within one to two hours? <laughs> Why are you going for the Pepsi? So I am tired. Because <laughs> blood sugars have crashed. and you, you've, you've crashed down so low that now you're craving something to bring the blood sugars back up. You go for the Pepsi. Then your blood sugars go back up again. 
And it's a cycle. It's a vicious cycle that many people go on throughout the day. And it's not uncommon that person that grabs the, the Coke and a donut on the way to work, they consume the donut and the Coke, and the blood sugar goes skyrocket. So Insulin that for that. Within, within an hour, <laughs> you're, you're at work. Within an hour, all of a sudden, you're crashing. You're falling asleep at your desk. You're hungry. You get up and go to the candy machine. You grab that Snickers bar because Snickers what? Yeah, it yeah. satisfies, right? Yeah. Satisfies for about a half hour to an hour, right? You get that, again, that spike and that crash again. This whole time, you are promoting increased fat storage, and, and you're really limiting your body's ability to really you break down so and utilize fat. If I'm at Target and I'm going to buy um, a York peppermint patty, which happened today, not in real life, I should just grab the jerky. Like if yes. I need something fast. What if she did the jerky. jerky with it? <laughs> Can I have a jerky and a York peppermint patty? There See, is if you do a protein yeah. with the junk food, does it help to offset it? <laughs> He's like, everyone leave. <laughs> Get out. You're all making me angry. Get out. <laughs> Can I smoke? I you know, it's, it's like I said, there, there is no bad foods. <laughs> is, it, is it better to have the protein with the peppermint patty? Yes. Is it better to choose something besides a peppermint patty? <laughs> sure. Yes. Or but if you've absolutely decided, I'm going for sugar, I'm having my sugar, wouldn't it be better to have some protein with the sugar? Well, and this this is where I, I what I recommend is, is to do this. Pause just a moment before buying the peppermint patty. Hmm. And, and I, I'd say even put your hands out physically in front of you and say, in this hand, here's the results that I want to achieve. In this hand is that York peppermint patty. Which is more important to me? So take it away from that York peppermint patty having power over you to saying, what am I going to choose? I choose the results or I choose the peppermint patty. Some days that peppermint mm -hmm. patty just may be more important yeah. than, that, than the results. And that's okay. Yeah. It really is. That's okay. As long as you get back at the driver's seat and say, you know what? I'm the one now in charge of what I'm actually consuming, not the peppermint patty. I've had, a, I, I have one, I had one client particularly tell me that he, he said, I love to, food too much to be successful. And it was, wor I, you know, it was basically working to, to find that balance to, it's okay to enjoy food, but it's finding that balance to where it's still going to promote the results that I am searching for. Does that help answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Darn you, it does. Yeah. But I feel like I already was making a healthy choice with the York peppermint <laughs> patty over like the Reese's peanut butter cup. I feel like that was a win because it's dark chocolate. But, so now that, you know, so I paused. I on to for the peanut butter cup because it had peanut Posey. butter in it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The problem, the problem is, is all this, the extra sugar. And, and, and the reality is the extra mm -hmm. sugar is, is, you know, is going to get in the way of the results you're looking for. It's, it's not going it, to, so, but like I said, there are times when you might be like, hey, you know what? Today is a day when that is more important. And that's okay. I might just need to start shopping at Good Earth. Because then, there's, be, then there, there's not the Pepsi, there's no and temptation. there's not the York peppermint patties. So I have a question for you. Yes. Because I have, well, it's been a few years when I had really high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And so doing protein, like, do you think it's a difference between animal protein versus plant based protein? And like, what are some of your ideas? Like when I think of protein from plant-based, all I can think was like almonds. Tofu. Which I cannot do. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried, but like what, I mean, do you, do you think there's a difference between plant-based versus? You know, there, there have been a lot of studies in which they've looked at this and, and some of them are inconclusive to really identify it. Uh, what they found though is that if, if in moderation, animal protein is not, is, is if you balance that with other types of protein, mm -hmm. it's not really going to be a significant impact in, in, in affecting your cholesterol levels overall, if it's balanced overall. Uh, one of the problems is many of us consume a lot, of, many people consume a lot of the really high fat, high, you know, these high saturated fat foods, some, you know, like that, instead of having a lean cut of meat, they have, say, that ribeye with a big fat back on there. Mm -hmm. uh, and they consume even the fat, you know, that's, that's one of the problems with a long diet. But if you're consuming lean cuts of meat, uh, incorporate fish into your diet, uh, there's really not a lot of evidence, solid evidence, because there's it's inconclusive. It's gone both, both ways. But a lot of it depends on you. What, Every what, one of what us is a little different. For what are snacks of protein that you would think of like, real quick? Uh, Greek yogurt's a great one. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, Greek yogurt, if, if, and you want to look at their label because there are some that say Greek yogurt on them but only have about 12 to 13 grams of protein. Greek yogurt is typically going to have or close to about 22 to 25 grams of protein. Another peanut butter, any kind of butters like peanut butter or uh, not going to say butter, nut butters, any, like peanut butter, almond butter, those are also good protein sources. Mm -hmm. And the fats are healthy, they're, health, they're healthier fats. Uh, in fact, you know, I know he goes a 40, 30, 30, the zone does, mm -hmm. but the, the, there's, there's actually a lot of evidence to say that if your fats are primarily from healthier sources, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like nut fats, like almond, um, almost for example, from nuts or, or avocados, is that's, that's where your fats are coming from. If you were to get closer to 40% of your calories in fats, if primarily healthy fats, then that's still, that's safe. Uh, it's still good. But... Uh, so there's there's a few different you know one that's easy to carry around is a cheese stick too like a cheese stick is a good protein uh, I like apples and peanut butter and apples and cheese stick is a really good a good snack or grapes and, and you know any kind of fruit with uh, cheese peanut butter uh, yogurt you know, like Greek yogurt along something along those lines but if you want the satiate what's the word satiating the satiation yeah then you have to put some protein. In. You're going to have greater satiation response because it's going to, number one, it's going to cause the blood sugars to increase slower mm -hmm. and it's going to sustain you longer. And so you're going to have a longer period of time before you crash. You have that period of crash. Yeah. So that, that's, that's why the protein is so important with that. And, and the main reason why the zone has multiple <laughs> snacks in between, it has, you, know, it very, you, you don't go more than two or three hours without eating something. Yeah. Is because you don't want your blood sugars to get too low because as they get too low, you, the, our body has a way of kind of bringing them back up a little bit. There's a hormone called glucagon that does that. But as they get too low, it does create a, an appetite. And, and we start to get hungry and, that, and we start to crave food. And, and sometimes we get irritable and, and tired. And, and, and we get tired snack, too. I'm like not happy with that. No. <laughs> I've never noticed. <laughs> Good call. Good call. Good call. You're a smart man. Because right. he's worse than I am. <laughs> Any other questions along those lines? Any questions at all? I have a lot, but I don't know where to start. Um, start with your first one. I don't know where that one is. <laughs> Um, well, so how do you get 30 grams of protein in your meals without it being too many calories then? You know, there's, there's, uh, there's actually some evidence that calories are a misnomer. That it's not a matter of an exact number of calories that is, is important. It's the, what we're eating is more important than the calories themselves. Now, I'm not saying that means you, can, you have a gluttony of calories, but... Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, very rarely do we eat the same number of calories every single day. We fluctuate up and down. The body can handle that a little bit. But the reality is when we're talking about 30 grams of protein, 30 grams of protein really is only about 120 calories. So give me an example of six things that would be 30 grams of protein. Well, you know, well four ounces of meat is about 30 grams of protein, okay. give or take, depending on, on the, the, you know, how much like a hamburger patty is going to be probably a little less protein than say a, a four ounce you know serving of chicken breast just because of the you know the extra stuff that's in a hamburger patty that's that you're going to find um so but you know when you're talking about meat it's right along that like even with uh uh fish is going to be about the same thing about four ounces of fish four ounces of any meat is going to be about in that realm okay uh let's see <clears throat> Chia seeds and those type of do those have protein in them like I was like chia seed or, or they do chia, chia seeds. I'm not right off the top of my head. I don't know how much protein is in is in a, a half cup of chia seeds. I but they they are a good protein source. Uh, you know baked beans. That's a pretty good protein source. Uh, there is some carbohydrate with that, so you you want to make sure you balance that when you're with your overall approach. Uh, you know, I want to say it's about a cup of, uh, if I remember right off the top of my head, a cup of black beans is right about 25 to 30 grams. Um, so give or take right in that range. So those are a couple, a few items uh, right off the top like of my head. How much is two eggs? Two eggs is going to be, I usually get about three eggs. So I'm going to say two eggs is going to be right around 25 grams of protein. What okay. would you say would be... The key to being successful with your weight loss. 
That's a very good question. The reality is the key to overall success is number one, adherence. All the research points to that is whatever you're going to do is adhere to it, you have strict, as strict adherence as possible. And then it's also important to uh, keep a balance. Make sure you have a balanced approach throughout the process. And then having a support group, like you know, having like you guys have here, have a support group around you, because it, it's you know the whole weight loss pro process is kind of a convoluted mess. It's not as easy as just the energy in and energy out that a lot of people have taught for years. It's it's very complex. A lot of psychological stuff, a lot of emotional stuff are involved. And when you have a support group around you, and and you have a program that is that is a balanced approach, you're much more likely to be successful. Thank you.